If you're just tuning in, then my name is Joel Duggan, and this is The Citadel, and we are in the Nether, and we are in the Nether Hub. Uh, we haven't been here in a long time, and uh, this is a survival multiplayer server where I do geeky stuff in Minecraft with my friends, and this is the weird, unfinished part of our Nether. Everything is very day one Minecraft around here, uh, but today... We're going to take a break from all the work that we've been doing in the end, and we are going to raid a nether fortress. I have been itching to start a new farm, and I saw Nembom and uh, I believe uh, Eskal85 are the two YouTubers that turned me on to this crossroads nether fortress farm. And if you look over in the distance with my zoom key somewhere, can we see it from here? We cannot. We cannot. That was supposed to be dramatic. That was supposed to be a reveal. And I got shafted. There we go. Right over there. There's another fortress crossroads. And it's going to be epic because it is in a giant lava lake. I'm very excited about this. This is going to be super cool. Uh, but before we can do anything over there, we have to tackle <laughs> all of the baddies <laughs> that are currently floating around. There's ghasts. There's blazes there is wither skeletons i think the fortress even comes all the way out here so we're going to do our best to uh slab it we're going to try and reduce some of the spawns we're going to light it up try to reduce the risk of death etc uh and that is what we are up to today wish me luck successful infiltration we've landed without anyone noticing that we're here uh, i don't anticipate this being terribly tough but I'm going to remember <laughs> that I have taken off my elytra and not jump off the edges of anything. I'm going to take the uh, rockets off my hotbar. We're going to put the elytra back someplace safe. Let's do that. And I think the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a crafting table and we're going to make some slabs because I want to try and uh, spawn proof a good portion of this so that we don't have to deal with constant bad guys so already we have got a few friends that we're gonna have to deal with the old-fashioned way so let's switch out the swords bow is at the ready I think everything else is good we've got lots of chicken so we should not have any issues I think I might actually leave the ender chest here for now and let's just uh, go out here. Oh, I think a blaze has found us. Yes. Now I don't want to hit that pigman. So let's try and let's try and do this. Oh, got him. Tricky. Ha ha success so I'm not sure where uh, in the middle of this fortress I'm supposed to leave things empty but I just thought for now we try to just minimize any of the spawns that are available and force them into one area so that we could at least avoid it maybe even close it off oh wow hello Let's switch this up. Oh, right. That goes away. You know what I should do is I should put, I should have some um, fire resist potions is what I should do. Let's, this is why I left this out. Let's just do this real fast. Maybe face the direction where all the bad guys are coming from. And we'll put one of these on the hot bar. The weird thing is I'm probably gonna have to take this out because eventually I'm gonna make this into something nice, uh, nice looking. And I'm not entirely sure uh, what colors or what slabs or things I'm gonna use. So that's why I'm using stone right now because it's just something that you have an absolute ton of. And ultimately you always need slabs for some sort of you know farm project or something like that. Oh wow. Where does this go? Just to, the, just to the ceiling or does it have like a whole other level? Interesting. I'll probably end up just mining this out. 
and then slabbing that. It's probably the better idea. But since we're here, maybe we should do this. Cool. I was expecting this to be a lot more action packed. I was anticipating ghasts to be spawning like just everywhere. And uh, we haven't really had any problems. Of course, now that I say that out loud, <laughs> I anticipate quite a lot of problems. Scaldi's Gimp says, I've been listening, enjoying the discussion about piling rocks. Would love more natural bits too. Oh yeah, for spawn chunks. Yeah, uh, having some sort of like rock piles. These are the kind of things that I think I've probably seen in some of the media for Hytale. And I feel like some of the things that they're doing in that game are going to be very appealing. And I would not be surprised if some of the things that they do in Hytale are like directly aimed at the stuff that you currently cannot do in Minecraft. I would be, uh, they would be silly if they didn't do it. You know, like I think there's already been a, con a confirmed picture of like vertical slabs and stuff. So like, I, I think Hytale is going to go that route. I don't think it's going to be a direct competitor. I think they're going to be a good, kind of like a good push for these kind of games. Like for consumers, having a game like Hytale out there, it's just good. Like it's just having another game compete in the same sort of space regardless of how good it is, is just going to make the content better, right? That's just how that, how that, how that rolls. Speaking of new content, a uh, sneak peek about what I want to talk about tomorrow on the Citadel Cafe, and that is No Man's Sky Beyond. That comes out tomorrow, and I wish that I had a computer that could run it. I'm almost considering installing Windows on my Mac and, and just playing it as best I can for now. But I've been talking with uh, my friend John, who has offered to help me uh, build a gaming PC. Because for those of you that don't know, I currently I play it on my Mac. Um, it's better for podcasting and video editing, and it's it, very good for my art design needs. But uh, when it comes to gaming, I am usually up a creek. Uh, there's really not a whole lot going on. So, uh, I finally have an opportunity to do a couple things. Uh, the new gaming PC will double as a VR work machine for me because I want to learn how to do some art and painting and stuff in VR. I'm seeing a lot of really cool space uh, spaces happening in that, in that realm. Uh, I believe his name is Goro Fujita. He works for Facebook and Oculus Rift, and he does some amazing stuff in a program called Quill. And Quill 2.0 just came out. So really, it's going to be a mix of me having a um, VR work machine, but then also a uh, VR gaming machine. And No Man's Sky Beyond is VR capable. And it's not a plug-in. It's not a port. The game itself, in its entirety, will support VR. Uh, so I can play however I want. And I'm very curious. I've got a funny feeling I'll end up with the PC and all the means to play uh, before I get the VR package, like before I get the Oculus. Because I may hold off on that just to kind of see what's next. And it's going to look so cool to have that farm in there. I may end up just ripping all this kind of stuff out because I, I like Nether Brick. I might just want to keep it, just mine it out, have it, have it be out of the way. Uh, but not this, like this kind of thing. We're just going to go inside and we're going to um, we're going to, to slam it. Now, I don't know if there's anything underneath this. There's a skeleton there. There's a platform here. So I guess there could be there could be a hallway like that. We might have to go down through the ceiling. There's no staircase here, but there might be. Looks like there might be a corridor. Yeah, that looks like it has an inside. Ah, we do have a friend down here. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Hmm. <laughs> this is interesting. Let's just spam this. You know, I have to say, it's been a long time since I raided another fortress, and this is pretty fun. I like exploring, having like all the maze of where to go new corners and things hearing wither skeletons around the corner <laughs> where is he and a blaze and nether ward all kinds of crazy stuff happening right here i think they might be above us right up there 
can minimize some of the spawns anyway. Wah! Can he not get in here? I don't think he can get in here. Sweet. Ha! Oh, I still got withered though. Do shields block the wither effect? I don't think they do. I'm just using his height disadvantage. Bye bye. Done. Never want to think about it <laughs> or see it ever again. Thanks. All of this is now slabbed and uh, is very quiet as a result, which I'm happy about. I'm down with that. I am surprised we haven't seen more ghasts. I'm not asking for more, but I'm just surprised we've not seen, seen more. Lots of these dudes around, though. Uh, and I'm just curious as to where the best place to get inside is. I mean, we've got this here. I'm wondering if we should maybe just keep focused on the top of this do that and then do that top and then go inside after that that might be the best way to go yeah if you're, if you're not used to the nether it can be a little bit sketchy i've gotten better i never used to fly in the nether uh but ever since we switched over and had the um the dragon drop elytra i've been a little bit more confident in if i lose my elytra that's not the end of the world i just have to do a short dragon fight and i can get it back um, it's nice when you're doing content as a creator and you just you're not set back by having to find some random uh, end city trying to locate new elytra. So I know on Infinity Cove, we actually have more data packs going on than currently on the Citadel. And I think people are enjoying, I think the quality of life data packs that we've got going on there. The one that I like a lot is the Shulker, the Shulker Mite from Voodoo Beard, where you can um, spawn Shulker Mites, no, spawn Ender Mites on Purper, and then they burrow into purper and become shulkers so it's not super easy i've spoken about it on the spawn chunks before you still have to get an endermite to spawn which takes a little while then you have to wait for it to turn into a shulker which takes another little while then you have to fight the shulker which depending on how good you are at that could also take a little while so it's not a super fast way to get um shulker boxes but it is a reliable way it's there's no chance of not finding an entity there's no flying for miles and miles uh, with nothing uh, to look at because of course that's boring and who wants to do that right i have no idea what else i'm going to build out here so i'm kind of sort of trying to plan for the future just kind of making it functionally spawn proof but then also kind of thinking about what we're doing at a time i think we're going to have to do it as a gray build because uh i've been doing so much of the slabbing i don't really want to redo this so i feel like whatever we do gray is going to be one of the highlight colors i think in the final farm design i do want to do something bright um bright colorful as the main color i don't know what i've done a pink farm i've done a red farm i don't want to do orange so that doesn't leave us a whole lot of options but whatever it is it's going to go right here like right in this space i hope that blaze doesn't anger pink bin that would be bad all jobs are problematic. I don't know. I, I kind of like this whole hobby streaming gig. <laughs> if I could make this a little bit more full time, then I would do it. Oh, they're fighting. I didn't realize they would get on each other's cases. That's awesome. I knew they would fight me. Was he angry at me? Yeah, he is. Crap. Try to get him out here where there's no other zombie pigment in earshot. One shot dead, that maybe didn't alarm anybody else. We'll know if I run into any new ones. So we have to tackle this spawner and I'm gonna do it with glowstone. And I think if we just hit the whole thing with crazy amounts of glowstone, we should be good. So I'm gonna run in real fast and just start spamming glowstone. There, 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 there. There, there. Darn it.
What does one have to do to, sp to spawn proof <laughs> this thing? That's crazy. This is a large fortress. It goes all the way back there. So we're going to have to get rid of a lot of the insides of this for this to be an efficient farm. Uh, but it's fun. I really enjoyed working on this so far. Uh, but we need to go get some more stone. So we're going to fly back to my swamp base where I have my bulk storage and pick up some more gear. Some more goodies, as they say. Which I believe is over this way. Yes. And yes, for anybody that one that is wondering, all of these double chests are all full of stone. <laughs> it's a little bit sick. Nembom's video, uh, and it's going to be that Nembom farm that I'm building, um, his video is not really a tutorial. It's it's more of a download the world and then count blocks and do it all that way. And I'm not really sure exactly how he pulled that off. Um, I also want to try and find, I tried to look up some of uh, Escal 85's old videos because he did this farm as well. And he altered it a little bit to suit his needs. And I kind of want to look at how he did it, but I don't know... Because Eskal did it on a stream, which means that the VOD is no longer available because it was a long time ago. I should have downloaded them if I had a chance. If I, if you ever have that opportunity, I should have done that. Um, because I think in his YouTube videos, he just kind of like cuts from one, one episode to the next and like the farm's like almost done. So, but I might be able to, to learn a little bit about what he did by just watching a couple of his videos over again. And looking around, you know, pausing it. I know he built um, the collection system, kind of like not live, but step by step in one of his videos. So I want to look into that. I'm not entirely sure. I know that I I have a specific level that I'm supposed to start the farm on, but I'm okay with giving myself a little bit of extra room at the bottom to have more control over to how things are collected. Because I think one of the things that Iskel ran into with a farm like this is that he ran into bedrock really quickly. And uh, I'd rather try to avoid that. So I'm okay with a slightly higher, slightly less efficient farm. The only trick is that I think I might be stuck with where the crossroads is and where the nether box is uh, around that crossroads. Like I think I have to stick the um, platforms in a very specific order. So I do have a download of this world that I can use the um, the Nether Box plugin. Can't remember the name of it right now. We talked about it on Spawn Trunks. It's probably linked somewhere. Pixel Riffs has done it in a video. We mentioned it last week, so episode fifty-one, I think. Uh, that is um, at fifty or fifty-one, but the link to that one of Pixel Riffs videos is going to be in in those show notes at uh, SpawnTrunks.com, and so. I want to try and figure out where height wise here I have to do the farm. And once I build it, stuff is going to start spawning there quite regularly. I mean, this isn't perfectly spawn proof, but it's getting there. But uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. If you like this and you want to hear me talk more Minecraft, you can head over to thespunchunks.com. Check out the podcast that I do with Pixel Riffs. We just celebrated one year. Episode 52 was just the other day. So I'm looking forward to more of those. You can also find me at joelduggan.com. I'm an artist and an illustrator, and I do all kinds of really cool stuff there. And last but not least, if you're not already here, you can follow me on Twitch. Just my name, Joel Duggan. It is where I do the bulk of my Minecraft uh, streaming and recording and video creation. So you can actually hang here live uh, while the sausage is being made. Uh, and if you enjoy it, then you can support it. You can go to patreon.com slash Joel Duggan and you can join in the community. Any support at all gets you into the Discord. And of course, the brand new Infinity Cove server is up. And if you choose to support at that level, then we will whitelist you and bring you into play with a very, very cool community uh, over there on the uh, the community server. So thanks very much to Paranor, to Cosmic Dancer, who has been a mod this whole time. Paranor is also a mod, but he was late. So we're going to give him a little bit of a, of a hard time. Uh, we love you, Paranor. We're just kidding. And that's going to be it. I will see you guys all next time.
Cosmic Dancer has subscribed for the 12th month in a row, a full year. Holy crap. Have I known you for that long, Cosmic? That's insane. 